So this is the Thermal Wright Peerless Assassin 120. It's a dual tower, six heat pipe CPU cooler. It's rated to cool a CPU that can pull up to 250 watts. And we're gonna test that out on my 7900X, which pulls at max load about 200 watts. And for comparison, 7950X pulls at about 225 watts. Then we get to the Intel side on their high end, the 13700K pulls in about 250 watts. And then when you get to the Ridiculous, which is the 13900K, can pull about 300 watts of power under full load. So it's going to be interesting to give this a test to see uh, how this handles the CPU when it's under full load and the CPU when you're just gaming. Now, what makes this unique is that all of this can be had for about 40 US dollars. And this comes in a bunch of different styles. You can get like the gray on silver with this one, kind of like, almost like a gunmetal gray. There's white with RGB and everything in between. There's a bunch of different uh, styles of the CPU and nothing else price-wise comes close. Uh, I think the next closest one is like 60 or $70 and then it just goes up from there. So can this handle at least 200 watts? And is it a good deal? Anyway, let's give it a try. Well, as you can see in my system, I have the white with RBG. So we're gonna go over here and we're just gonna pull this plastic off. There we go. And let's turn it on. So I have it in the 5, 000, Corsair 5000D airflow. So what's good about this case is that it has tons of airflow. There's nothing restricting the fans in the front. And then there's three fans on top for exhaust and one in the back for exhaust. So there's lots of airflow to help keep the air moving through the cooler and then cool the CPU and out, out of the case. So I've been running Cinebenchart 23 for close to an hour now. This is the second 30 minute uh, block of running multi-core. And I've already done the benchmark and single core test. So we're getting into about an hour now. So the cooler is nice and hot. All the vapor, liquid, whatever's in it is nice and hot to actually test what it is what it, uh, what it can do at uh, max temperatures and it's not looking that great now the cpu has a thermal limit of 95 degrees uh, give or take and that's when it starts to thaw down and we're already seeing die one and die two come pretty close to that it's hitting 93.9 at the max and 94.8 so that's a little disappointing considering uh, they claim that this can handle a 250 watt CPU. This, um, can you see it on here? I'm not sure if it does show it. Uh, yeah, CPU package power. So it hit 196.8 uh, watts for a max. So it's hitting close to 200 watts. It says it can handle 250. I don't see this thing being able to handle 250 watts under this kind of scenario. Uh, so anything above that, the 7950X, the 13700K, uh, 13900K, uh, I'm not even sure if this would be able to handle the 13600K at max uh, temperature. So it's it's uh, kind of wanting in this area. However, again, like I said, this is under a max load. This is not representative of, like, everyday work so let's take a look at some gaming bench or 
put this through some games and see how it does there. So my goal with these games was to try and push the CPU as much as possible. So what I did is I dropped the resolution and all the graphic settings down pretty low so that I can start driving more of the work to the CPU so it would have to keep up with the number of frames that the GPU is generating. And in this case with Cyberpunk 2077, uh, I was hitting a max CPU utilization in certain spots of around 44%. And with that, we were hitting some CPU temps in the low 70s. I think I saw it hit at one point a high of like 71 or 72 degrees. So from a gaming standpoint, which is probably a more you know, representative of what uh, the kind of load these CPUs would have on them at any given time, it's handling it uh, pretty well. So this is the first game I tested it on. Let's move on to the next game. Uh, I did the same thing, dropped the resolution down, dropped the settings down, I had everything on low, everything turned off just so I could push the uh, the, the CPU the most uh, with the number of FPS that I was hitting. And in this case with Fortnite, I think I hit a CPU utilization of maybe the mid 30s and CPU temperatures were the high. I saw at one point I think it hit 70, but for the most part it stayed in the mid 60s. So again, gaming, uh, me trying to push the CPU as much as possible. Uh, this is it. This is fine. Like mid 60 temperatures, uh, 70. Anything I'd say below 80 is pretty good temperature. Now on to the last game I tested, this is Forza, uh, Forza Horizon 5, and it actually put the most strain on the CPU. I was actually hitting a CPU utilization of around 55%, and it was driving the CPU temperature up to 75, just below 80 degrees uh, at certain points during uh, this lap. So certain, certain games definitely uh, utilize the CPU more than others and but it still seems like if it's just from a gaming standpoint uh, this this cooler is doing a pretty good job now with that being said this is not going to work for all all CPUs uh, like I was saying the 7950X um, has a higher well it's got an extra four cores so it definitely has a higher uh, max wattage draw, uh, same with the 13900K, which is crazy. It operates at like, it can pull 300 watts, 13700 can hit up around 250. So all those high-end uh, CPUs, not probably the best idea to use that with. Or if you plan on overclocking, that will definitely uh, drive the wattage up and cause the, the amount of heat to increase as well that I doubt this cooler will be able to handle it. So I can see a few situations where you might want to opt with this versus going with a more expensive CPU cooler uh, depending on which CPU you get. If you're getting a mid-range or a lower end CPU, this should be perfectly fine at cooling it. If you're going with a more high-end CPU such as the 7900X or greater than that, that's going to generate quite a bit of heat. Um, you can still go with this depending on what your purpose of using that CPU for is. If you plan on just primarily using gaming, as you saw in the benchmarks, this did a great job of keeping the CPU cool enough that you wouldn't have to worry about any type of thermal throttling. I'm assuming this would probably work with all the CPUs that generate more heat than this, uh, maybe even up to a 13900K uh, from gaming standpoint, not when you're uh, using all the cores. But uh, the other thing I would suggest doing is if you do plan on getting this uh, CPU cooler, make sure your case has a lot of airflow. There are a lot of cases out there that have, that look nice, but they have a lot of restrictive air um, coming into it. There might be a glass panel or very small and tight grouped um, perforations uh, to allow the air to come in so it's just going to restrict that air being pulled in so it's not going to get enough cool air from outside of the case in 
to cool the uh, the CPU cooler, like to cool the fans or the fins. So that would be my suggestion. Um, I have an AIO. I'm gonna flop it, uh, switch it out. I just wanted to see uh, what what could this handle. And from a gaming standpoint, it does a great job. Um, yeah, for 40 bucks, I don't think you can beat it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, if you found this video informative or helpful, think about liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks.